Satoshi Kon was a famous Japanese director, writer, and animator who produced some of the most thought-provoking films to release in Japan over the course of the early 2000s. Kon's work was often experimental and drew an indefinite line between the world of reality and the world of dreams. This element of Kon's work lent heavily to the avant-garde movement of surrealism, founded in the 20th century. His final film, Paprika, however, follows the concepts behind surrealism more so than any of his other films. Before I continue, let's have a little bit of a history lesson. The concept of surrealism was coined by Guillaume Apollinaire when describing Parade by Ballet Russe, then developed as a literary journal detailing uncensored thoughts and descriptions of dreams by André Breton, Louis Aragon, and Philippe Sopal. The surrealist movement, as outlined in the dictionary definition, sought to release the creative potential of the unconscious mind. The art that surrealism produced denies logical explanations and instead is more of an expressionistic work. Surrealism found much success from being abstract. A prominent surrealist artist, Salvador Dali, once said, People love mystery, and that is why they love my paintings. This element of the Surrealist movement would later be a source of inspiration for many directors in cinema, including David Lynch, Hideaki Anno, and the late Satoshi Kon. Kon uses these abstractions as a way to support different messages in his works through the use of film language. Kon's last feature film, Paprika, made in 2006, initially explores Surrealism through the creation of a device in the world of the film. This device is called the DC Mini, and it allows the dreams of the device's wearer to be seen by those around them. However, a technical oversight enables one DC Mini to be able to enter the dreams of anybody in the real world, causing the people whose dreams are invaded to lose their sanity. Within the dream world of the film, the people who lose their sanity have a manifestation of these psychological problems within their dreams, which are observed by the protagonist of the film. In the first instance of this mental decline, we see a landscape of the patient's disturbed psyche, a remote desert stretching on for miles with a dominantly yellow color palette. The visual is calm and relaxing from its simplicity and familiarity. It could be seen as the representation of the mental psyche itself, as many surrealist works feature a desert as the backdrop, most notably the works of Salvador Dali. In this landscape, there is a parade of randomly assorted objects that marches through, invading the calm atmosphere with a sharp contrast of bright colours and confetti, with highly exaggerated movements to clash against this backdrop. The participants of this parade are nonsensical and include automobiles, dinosaurs, fire hydrants, and enlarged children's toys. The soundtrack within the scene, composed by Susumu Hirasawa, strengthens its chaotic nature with clashing styles, almost conducting the parade with a synthesizer, a brass band, and spiritual vocals. The juxtaposition of images is something which is prevalent in numerous surrealist works, and Paprika takes this a step further by using animation as a tool to capture this feeling of insanity invading the human mind. Paprika doesn't adhere to the approach of mainstream anime of the early 2000s, which had a tendency to focus more animation on highly choreographed fight sequences. By placing so much importance onto the characteristics of the parade, every object is given its own unique rhythm and movement, with very close attention to detail. By placing so much importance onto the characteristics of the parade, Paprika is being true to itself and is embracing its surrealistic nature by creating something which is, at its root, an avant-garde representation of insanity. A character named Kosaku Tokita, the man behind the creation of the DC Mini, is described as an obese man-child by Dr. Chiba. Chiba opens an elevator, and when the doors open, we see Tokita not only occupying the entirety of this space, but he is stuck within it and requires assistance in order to leave. The spectator is positioned into a negative viewpoint of this character. By initially positioning the spectator against Tokita due to his excessive weight, the film goes on to redeem him throughout the story by highlighting his innocent and caring personality. The film encourages the spectator to read things deeper than a visual level by using Tokita's unrealistically proportioned body to create two opposing responses. At first, we do not align with this character. The spectator is only presented with alignment to Tokita's character when he loses himself to insanity, and Dr. Chiba attempts to awaken him to no avail. Tokita's avatar upon losing his sanity in the dream world is an enlarged children's toy of a robot. Chiba is emotionally distraught by this, shaking the robot back and forth whilst the robot marches forward with the parade, unaware of Chiba's interference. 
Takita's avatar of a child's toy robot represents his personality of childishness and ingenuity. Chiba would later tell Takita in a last bid to bring him back from insanity that she has fallen in love with him. Saying this does in fact bring Takita back and the two proceed to defeat the main antagonist together. The film is carrying an underlying message that the original negative viewpoint of Takita was incorrect and that there is a more important depth to this character. Chiba and Takita's dynamic not only introduces the idea of depth in terms of a person, but opens the spectator's mind to look at the film in a more analytical sense in order to understand things to a greater extent. Similar to how Takita is a morbidly obese character but has a desirable and likeable personality, Paprika has a story which can be followed in the traditional sense and also has a depth to it which can be read in a multitude of different ways. The narrative arc of Tokita's character acts as a representation of the depths of surrealism within the entirety of the film. Paprika goes on to raise the question of whether or not we rely too much on stories with a strict narrative and rational view on life, even challenging these types of stories through the character of Detective Konokawa, a man haunted by a failed case in which he assigns guilt to himself for not being able to save the victim. There are multiple dream sequences of Konokawa reliving the moments leading up to this, a terrifying feeling of helplessness is created as Konakawa runs toward the victim and the floor begins to shift beneath him, creating an ever steepening obstacle. We only see this narrative arc through the surreal lens of Konakawa's dreams. Konakawa then relives the dream, but this time he is able to overcome his trauma and shoot the murderer before he gets away. This sequence even concludes with the words, the end, superimposed over Konakawa. Paprika rejects the concept of the classical murder mystery, which pertains to realism, by instead offering a detective story which is dealt with entirely in the world of dreams. Paprika uses surrealism in this instance to prove that we do not need to be grounded in reality to be told a cohesive and compelling story. The film openly celebrates distancing itself from reality by taking the story of a murder mystery, a genre which has a tendency to rely on rational thinking and logic, and exploring it in a completely original way. Satoshi Kon has created a wholly surrealistic detective story by avoiding the norms and tropes of its genre. Paprika goes on to suggest that this shift from reality is a desirable thing, as the end of the film depicts Konakawa going to the cinema after a film named Dreaming Kids is recommended to him. The cinema is a grandiose structure coloured gold and red with bright lights and luxurious red carpets. It is a visually appealing location and creates a relaxing atmosphere for the ending of the film. Overhead, there are numerous posters displaying all of Satoshi Kon's previous films, Perfect Blue, Millennium Actress, Tokyo Godfathers, and the aforementioned Dreaming Kids. Satoshi Kon's previous theatrical works appearing in the form of posters above the cinema is inherently meta. However, the final film, Dreaming Kids, is not real, and was never produced, causing its inclusion to stand out among the others. This final scene underlines the point of contemporary cinema itself. Similarly to how the DC Mini enables characters in Paprika to enter the dreams of patients, the medium of film allows us to become psychologically interpolated into the world of movies. By ending the film with Konakawa walking into a screening of dreaming kids, Paprika is praising cinema for allowing us to step into these different dreams. This is a fitting ending to Paprika, and was strengthened more due to the fact that it was ultimately Satoshi Kon's last feature release. Satoshi Kon died on Tuesday, August 24th, 2010, at the age of 46. He unfortunately died midway through production of his next feature film titled Dreaming Machine. Almost perpetuating the surrealist themes of the movie, we will never know what Dreaming Kids or Dreaming Machine look like, but its ambiguity and incompletion leaves us with our unconscious minds to ponder on what it could have been, allowing Paprika's impactful surrealist message about the beauty of cinema to stay relevant forever. Thanks very much for watching my video. If you want to know what video I'm going to be doing next, then make sure to follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description below. If you like this video, then please consider subscribing for more. And as always, thanks very much for watching.